Yesterday, I got an email from Kevin. Kevin's been a member of our uh, tribe for, for several years, and I've gotten to know him quite well. And he sent me uh, an email telling me that CRISPR was up some 30% uh, in the last two days. And did I have any idea what was going on and, and what action was I going to take? So I, I wrote him back and said I'd look into it and do a video on it. And so that's exactly what I wanted to do. To give you some background, I've been involved in studying CRISPR for quite some time. Uh, I'm very interested in uh, genome therapy, genome editing. Uh, I have a history in my family of cancer, and I would love to see that genome editing uh, took cancer out of my body and all of my children and grandchildren and the Grinkmeyer bloodline completely. And I think it's possible. So uh, I decided I was going to look into why did CRISPR take off and is this the time for me to get back in? Because I had liquidated my holdings several months ago and uh, I, because I didn't think things were progressing properly. Is now the time to buy in? That's what I want to talk to you about today, share my research, share my learnings, and uh, see if we can come to some conclusion. Not financial advice, just financial education and a sharing of information. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. As the thumbnail shows, CRISPR now is up for one month, 45.5%. Uh, uh, year to date, 58.76. And one year, 37.58. As you can see, uh, on this chart, it got as high as $170 back in August of 2021 and then crashed and came down substantially. Held up better than some of the others, uh, Editus and Beam and Caribou. But for the most part, uh, as, as the pandemic cleared and uh, the market pulled back, uh, they, they led the mar market to the bottom. And now CRISPR is, is um, rallying. And so I wanted to know why. So what I did was I went to, I'm a, I'm a member of Seeking Alpha. I get a lot of good information from Seeking Alpha. And so I went to Seeking Alpha and I read some articles on CRISPR. And basically what I found is they had what they called a good quarter and that it, they didn't lose as much as they'd lost the quarter before. And it, if, you, if you dug into it, you came to understand that um, they, they had an influx of money through a partnership or a collaboration that they're doing with Vertex, a pharmaceutical company, and they are working on a cure, uh, a one-does-all cure for sickle cell anemia. There are a number of companies who are working on uh, sickle cell anemia, and you need to understand there's there's two types of therapies um, that are, is a one-and-done type therapy. One is where you do it uh, in the body, and that is you put a, a needle in the arm and through CRISPR and a cassette that the CRISPR, the company, would develop, it would go in, cut the mutation in the uh, genome, take it out, replace it, and the cancer or the, the the sickle cell would be cured. The other way it's done is not is uh, in in a petri dish, and that is they go into your body and they take out some of your bone marrow and they treat the bone marrow with that CRISPR cassette in a in a petri dish and then take the resulting product and put it back into your body and thus uh, you create the the cure outside of the body. Um, it's called X cell as a as opposed to in vitro, um, and that's what uh, CRISPR is doing. They're doing it in a petri dish. Now, uh, this is n less desirable, of course, than the needle, but it it could be the next step. And they have been through the phase three trials uh, with the injection of substantial capital from um, 
Vertex. And that injection of capital from Vertex was why this past quarter they had better earnings or lesser losses than they have in the past. And so the market saw that. Uh, there was some some analyst who came forward and said this could justify a price of two hundred dollars uh, in in the future, uh, probably in the next two years. I don't know about that, and and I let me show you then what I did was I follow about seven stocks in this category, as well as the synthetic biology co- category and um, med, medical AI. And so what I did was create this chart to show me how are these stocks doing on a one-month basis, a, a year-to-date basis, and a one-year basis. And you can see uh, two of them stick out quite, prom- actually three, quite prominently. That would be Pacific Biosciences. Now, Pacific Biosciences is in the genome sequencing business. That is, they make the machine that sequences your genome. Uh, That used to be dominated by Illumina, 90% dominated. But here lately, um, Pacific Biosciences created some new uh, long-read um, uh, sequencing machines that are surpassing that of um, Illumina, and Illumina is having a battle with uh, Carl Icahn and his his telling them to give up on Grail um, and and stop fighting to control the Grail. Grail is a, a um, Israeli company that actually has a blood test that can do a read on uh, your body and tell you if you have one of some 50 cancers. For some reason, Carl Icahn doesn't uh, want that to be a part of Illumina. I think he wants Illumina to concentrate on what they do and do well. And he is actually uh, calling for the CEO to step down. That has put a lot of positive attention towards uh, Pacific Biosciences and uh, and their development of um, of a better machine, a more efficient machine. Need to understand that to have your your uh, genome sequenced in. 2000 would have cost you about a billion dollars to have it done with these new machines being developed both both by Illumina and uh, Pacific Biosciences they're getting the cost down below $500 and some of them project that they'll be down below $100 in the very near future so that's why Pacific Bioscience is showing a um, one month growth of 15% uh, year to date 51% and one year uh, 131% and as i say then you have crispr at 45 58 and uh, 37 and then you have uh, intella intella has had some success in the past in creating a in vitro, that is a needle in the arm, cure for a liver uh, cancer or a liver disease. And so they've got some good press of late saying that they're in stage two. um, And so they have a one month growth of 27, a year to date of 29, and a one year of 8%. So that brings me up to date on where are these companies in their developmental stages, and is this the time for me to jump in, particularly to uh, Pacific Biosciences, CRISPR, and and Intella? My take is no, Um, and that is because this seems to me as to be a bunch of hype that is being created by Wall Street and it is not based on any good results. I mean, it's it's got some promise, but these companies are not making money. They do not have a marketable product as of yet, and they still face the Food and Drug Administration to give them approval. 
And, and I think a lot of people discount, as I did, how difficult that will be. Because again, what you are asking the Food and Drug Administration to do is to say, okay, we have tested this on 60 people, and 58 people have had good results. 58 of the 60 people have, have had indications that, in fact, uh, the sickle cell is cured or the, the liver disease is cured, and we think um, it, it sh- we should go forward with it. Well, if I was the Food and Drug Administration, the first question I would ask is, how do we know what's going to happen to these 60 people that were successfully uh, cured in the next two years? How do we know that there is not some... Uh, afterlying side effect that could that could kill people. How long is it essential that we we monitor these people to make sure what we're doing is in fact not harmful to them? And until that question is answered, I don't believe that we are going to have a marketable drug or therapy that is going to be uh, accepted by the Food and Drug Administration, and then the medical community, and then the insurance community. Because again, this is a therapy that is going to cost not thousands of dollars, but millions of dollars. And what the insurance company is going to say is, okay, if we treat someone for sickle cell anemia for 20 years, what is the cost of that? as opposed to the, the cost of this therapy you're offering. And there is no doubt that if you get it early enough, the cost of the therapy is going to be substantially lower than the cost of the treatment that the insurance company might be laid up for. So there is no doubt in my mind that if we can remove the doubt that what's going to happen or the question of what's going to happen in five years to this person that you put a needle in their arm and their liver disease or their sickle cell went away, what's going to happen to them five years from now? I don't know the answer to that, but what I see here is a rush to judgment. What I see here that a a company like CRISPR, who had lost somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 80% of its value, regains uh, 45% of its value in uh, one month. That just doesn't seem right to me. Then when I, I look up and I see that Editus has gained 57% of its value. Now, now understand 57% of a $10 stock is $2.50. So it's, it's not a huge gain, but I, I look at this and say, no, this just isn't right. It isn't, it isn't realistic that a, co- a company can gain uh, 45 or 50 percent of its value in one. That's speculation. That is not investing. That is a bunch of people uh, in, in, in uh, enthusiasm coming forward and saying, this is my opportunity. That's speculation. That's, that's going to, to Las Vegas and, and putting, on it, putting it on all red. Uh-uh, I'm not going there. I might, again, I might miss out on this, but I guess I've, had, I've, I've learned a lot from Warren Buffett over the last two months. I need to be an intelligent investor. I can't be an emotional investor. And as much as I want this to be true emotionally, I can't justify it in, intellectually. I cannot justify at this point jumping in on this. I might lose on the short term, but I will... I am of the opinion that this won't hold up. Let's visit it again in 30 days, and let's see what we find out, okay? That's the direction I'm going. I've learned this again from Warren. I need to be an intellectual investor, not an emotional investor. And to put my money into Editus and Pacific and Intella, and and CRISPR at this time, 
would be playing totally from emotion. I don't want to miss out. I'm sorry. I'm going to miss out if I have to miss out. Okay. Kevin, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Anyone else who has looked at this and said, is it time to get in? I hope that clarifies. You make your decision. This is not financial advice. This is Kerry Grinkmeyer trying to be an intellectual investor. I think my money is better spent elsewhere. Talk to you more about this, I'm sure, in the future. (music) 